Christopher Maher is a former Navy SEAL who endured intense amounts of physical, mental, and emotional stress as a child and during and after his military career. He has taught himself how to free his energy, body, mind, and emotions from pain by developing the emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual aspects of being. Christopher studied traditional Chinese medical practices at the Pacific College of Oriental Medicine and at the Yosan University, then continued his studies at the University Healing Tao System. He is a student of the great master Mantak Chia at the Universal Tao Master School in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and is currently pursuing his master's and doctorate degrees in traditional Chinese medicine. Hello, everybody. I am pleased to introduce to you today Christopher Meher, who is an ex Navy SEAL who turned to self development to improve his well being. Hi, Christopher. How are you? Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm grateful to have you on. Oh, so thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here and share. Yeah, it's an exciting journey that you, that you are on. Yes, it's been what twenty four, twenty five years mm-hmm. of focusing on health, wellness, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, wellness, personal growth, structural biomechanics, personalities, Taoism. Yeah, I mean, you name it. I've looked under every rock, every stone, every fallen tree in the forest to find something of value that I could add to my life and add to those that I care for. Mm. I hear you. I'm, I'm really curious about the story that brought you here. So the background story that brought you to self-development and, dis- and to spirituality. Uh, pain. Mm-hmm. Pain. Pain and loss were my teachers. I... Um, I had a woman who was babysitting me. And when I was a child, I was three and a half years old. And she decided that the best way to teach me to not play with matches was to put my hands on the gas stove and to burn me. And she went a little too far. And I ended up with third and fourth degree burns, charred skin places in my body with no skin left. And had to do, had to spend a lot of time in hospitals for a seven year period getting skin grafts and, um, and continue to rebuild my hands so they work normal. Mm-hmm. So if you see this hand is much smaller than this hand. Yeah. So this mm-hmm. hand took most of the, most of the damage. And, you know, then I went into a, that put me into a state of shock, which I drifted into a coma. And I was out for quite a while. And uh, when I came back around, life was very different. Um, and so that was sort of the beginning of, you know, the the painful earth journey, right? Mm-hmm. I know people deal with all different levels of stress and trauma and abuse. And, and I feel like because of that, all that time in the hospital working with puzzles, it allowed me the opportunity to be really good at investigating and um, offering simple practical solutions for other people's very complex problems. Mm-hmm. And so in a way, I've been able to turn that the, that harm, that abuse into something very powerful. Yeah. And I really want to, yeah, I really, really want to honor that. It's, uh, I'm so sorry that you had to go through something so traumatic and abuse. It's, yeah, in, in any form, it has a huge impact. And for you as a child, um, it, it must have had a, yeah, it must have left a really, really powerful stain that you brought to light and you transformed it into power and into service. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, when other kids, well, honestly, I don't know what other kids were thinking, but whenever I was in church and I was hearing these 
these powerful stories, I was always wondering what could I do that could be as impactful as some of the heroes, stories that I was listening to. And um, the thing that I could do is I could overcome my own stressors and traumas and, and abuse mm-hmm. and then use that as service. And so that's the focus of every day of my life. So from that moment um, when you were three, four, to the moment where you decided to become to become a CEO, was it a story that combined also spirituality or was it after you stopped your professional journey that you decided uh, to turn towards spirituality? Um How do I say this? I was always orientated towards spirituality, Jimmy, uh, meaning I always understood the bigger messages being delivered from a very young age. I started counseling adults when I was seven years old. So um, I was always already educating people, always, already taking risk with adults and guiding them and sharing my insights and understandings of the universe. And and so that part of me was always present, right? Um, But I didn't grow up in a family that understood any of that. And so uh, it was when I went to my friends' homes and I could communicate and begin building a relationship with their parents where they were a little more open-minded. And then when I quit school, um, I went back to where my mother's raised, where she's from in Pennsylvania, and I opened up a sandwich shop called the Hoagie King. And, uh, we serve sandwiches all day long. And at one point, kind of looked inward and said, is this my life? I don't think this is enough. And I decided to sell my half of the business to my partner. And I moved on. And one of my buddies that I went to boarding school with, his mom picked me up on my birthday and she brought me to their house. And I went down into the basement and there was a biannual magazine about SEAL training. And on the cover, there were these uh, guys that were running down the beach with a telephone pole over their shoulder. And as soon as I saw that picture, I thought, that's the place for me. These people are going to stretch me. They're going to push me. They're going to challenge me. Because, you know, at some point I realized in life I wasn't being challenged relative to my potential. And I I needed a spark, something to shake me, something to push me, wake wake me up. And and deliver a powerful challenge. And go into SEAL training, which is held in Coronado, which is just south of San Diego. It's a small island. and. and they delivered the goods. They pushed me physically. They pushed me mentally. They pushed me emotionally. They pushed me spiritually. And every day you're being challenged and they're heaping on a little more stress, a little more tension and newer opportunities for you to figure out whether or not you have what it takes in order to be present enough to graduate. Hmm. And uh, it was a good experience. I was a very young man at the time, and the camaraderie was wonderful. The the being challenged all the time. I like to be competitive, right? I was so a strong, well defined ego, and I got to push up against something that would push back, and it was good for me. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm wondering how your ego. You mentioned your ego and your company being a competitive person i'm wondering how that um how was that shaped through the navy seal uh, journey but also through spirituality because <laughs> being ego driven and being in service are not very compatible yeah uh, i mean it, when i say a strong defined ego it means that i'm i have the will to complete what i start mm-hmm regardless of how difficult something is, right? That's positive ego, right? And then there's negative ego, where I'm choosing to maintain a position, even though in the face of all proof, 
the position that I'm maintaining is against the narrative of truth, right? That's a negatively defined ego. So people hear the word ego and they think, oh, it's always associated with a negative connotation. No, positive connotation of ego is I'm able to access my will center and to persevere through things that are extremely difficult. Mm-hmm. So what I'm regardless. Curious. Yeah, regardless of the length of time or the uh, the investment of energy or the investment of resources or the investment of time. When a person has a well-defined healthy ego, they're able to participate at the highest level of investigation into the things that shape humans into powerful words for change. And so I had a very well developed ego Mm -hmm. and and yes have there been times in my life where i've been on that negative ego place yeah sure right when i'm when i'm maintaining a position even though there's proof that the position i'm maintaining is outside of truth then i'm only being resistant for no good reason right and that's mm-hmm. that's a negatively defined ego. And so in the SEAL teams and SEAL training, they have a way of doing things, right? And their way is the way that they that that has been tested again and again and again to bear a particular kind of fruit, right? To produce a specific type of result. And you want guys in the SEAL teams who have strong defined egos because if you get caught behind enemy lines and you have information that will be detrimental to the operation that needs to be completed, if you have a weak ego, they're going to be able to get that information out of you and they're going to do harm to people that you love and care about. And so... I was able to use that power and that strength and turn SEAL training into HEAL training because I had a well-defined ego. Once I understood that with concerted effort and consistency, I could reduce the negative stress patterns that I picked up from being abused as a child, physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, I use that healthy aspect of my ego to persevere through some very difficult places where I had pain in my body. Mm-hmm. And so I use that ego, that healthy, well-defined ego to persevere and get my place self into a space where I was supple, where I was receptive, where I was out of an inappropriate stress state, where I was out of the protected mode. And into service. And mm-hmm. so when you're creating a body of work that's never been created in a way that I've created it, it takes a certain amount of devotion energetically. It takes a certain amount of devotion financially. It takes a certain amount of devotion psychologically, emotionally, spiritually. And thank goodness I had a very healthy strong will center and a healthy well-defined ego because that's what it takes it takes you know anything of great value on this planet has taken someone who's been willing to to devote to it for at least 30 years right because it takes 10,000 hours to simply master one thing and in the work that i do you know i've how do I say it? Synthesize six different systems together in order to create a more complete whole so that anyone on the planet with whatever challenge they're dealing with, we can provide a very simple, consistent solution. And that takes a lot of effort, a lot of devotion, a lot of commitment, a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of consciousness and a willingness to continue to investigate rather than sit on your the information that you've already downloaded right like i'm still constantly every week right for the last 
25 years, I'm continuing to push the envelope. And I'll be this way till the day that I die, right? So 25 years from now, there'll be even a greater system that people can come into that are struggling spiritually, that are struggling emotionally, that are struggling energetically, that are struggling physically, that are struggling biologically. Because I am devoted to the pathway of waking up, to becoming more conscious, to sharing and spreading and projecting more light, to becoming more self-aware. You mentioned the the six systems that you brought together. Would you mind expanding on that and making it tangible? How exactly are you supporting people who are well, being challenged by their human experience, just like everybody is? Yeah, I mean, um, when you look at the human body, right, and its energy fields, you have to understand that magnetism is the greatest driver. Right. So every cell in your body has a magnetic and an end and electrical charge. So humans are essentially electrolyzed magnets. And the question is, how do you take what's out of balance and put it back into balance? We have to be willing. You have to have a system in place that addresses that level of that human. So if you, if, if you laid a human down, you'd say the human has seven layers all the way down to the bone, okay? Seven layers. And you have to be, you have to have a system in place that can address every layer of that human, okay? So when you have a human body, every body's body, whether it's human or animal, right, or plant, right, there's different layers. Mm -hmm. Within that body that lead from the skin, actually from the orc field that goes around the body all the way down to the bone. Okay. And so how do you put a human back into balance? If you don't understand those seven layers, how are you ever going to make that happen? Right. If you don't understand that this bone, this particular bone is connected to this particular organ, and this organ's connected to this nerve, and this nerve is connected to this aspect of the brain, and this part of the brain is connected to this aspect of the skin, and it's connected to this electromagnetic channel that moves in and out of the body. How's anyone ever going to put someone back into supreme balance? How are you going to come back into supreme alignment? And so the systems within true body intelligence all address a different layer of the human, right? And so some people come in and they have different things going on. Their, their challenge is they have a terrible relationship with their mom. Or they come in and they have the guilt and shame of two abortions that they had 25 years ago. Or they have um, debilitating migraine headaches. Or they have insomnia. It's easy for them to fall asleep, but it's difficult for them to stay asleep. Or they get up and they urinate two or three times a night, right? So their sleep is constantly being interrupted. Or they have bloating or gas, right, in their gut at all times. So all humans have a place where their body is informing them that their consciousness is fragmented, right? So every human has a place in their body where their body is informing them that their consciousness is fragmented. Because, see, in an unfragmented human, you don't have biological issues, right? You don't have structural issues. You don't have psychological issues. You don't have emotional issues, right? And so. All of these fear-based states that humans have been engaged in for tens of thousands of years, okay, they corrupt the DNA and they corrupt the epigenetics. And so 
what gets passed on from generation to generation are all of the positive stressors and experiences and also all of the negative stressors and experiences. And then humans are then forced to figure out how to put that back into balance. And so, again, all humans, you lay them down and you measure them at seven layers as you start to push into their body you're going to find some level of discomfort, some level of pain, some level of distortion, some level of unresolved stress. And so I use each one of the systems, four of them on them, and two I teach them because it's important to me to empower other humans. How do you empower another human? You have to teach them what you know. And so... I had a great teacher. His name was Montak Chia. Uh, he runs a universal Tao healing system in Chiang Mai, Thailand. And he said to me, Oh, Christopher, you need to turn your client into student. And I was like, what are you talking about? He said, you need to teach them. Then they'd be very good student. And then they teach other people. I said, okay, this is the pathway. And so then I immediately um shifted out of a practitioner mindset into a teacher mindset. Okay, how do I help this person get beyond their own limitations and then teach them how to do it so now they become self-responsible? And so one of the systems, which uh you'll be sharing a video with your crowd, is called Bester Size. And best or size is the best form of exercise, but best, which is B-E-S-T-S, -S, stands for bio, energetic, self, transformational sequences, right? And this is a system where you go into the physical body to remove tension and stress. As you reduce that tension and stress, it opens up different channels of energy in your body now you're able to use the magnetic energy that's always in the air to come into the channel to fuel and feed that organ and that aspect of your consciousness that's fragmented so any place where someone has pain in their life there's different forms of pain there's emotional pain there's mental pain there's energetic pain and there's physical pain right and so physical pain would be what any place where you had pain in your physical body Usually the experience for most people, for most people, that's either their teeth or their joints or their head, right? When a person has emotional pain, they, they experience things like repression, um, narcissism, um, borderline behavior, depression. When people have spiritual pain, they have an inability to honor their own set of ethics, morals, values, and principles, right? So they're constantly lowering their own self-esteem by breaking those principles. But when you constantly break your principles and your ethics and your morals and your values and your disintegrous, you know what happens? You reduce your energy. Every time you do it, your energy gets lower. Every time you do it, your energy gets lower. Why? Because the spiritual body is made up of spiritual energy. And so the spiritual world is all about clearly understanding what's right and what's wrong, right? What's integrous and what's disintegrous. But when the body's fragmented, the electromagnetics are also fragmented. And now you have a disintegrous system that you're moving through the world in, which makes it very difficult to honor your morals, your values, your principles, and your ethics. And so let's say you were raised in Romania, right, in a family where that honored the body highly, okay? And so then your mom and dad, they never drank alcohol, they never did drugs, they didn't do any uppers, no caffeine, no amphetamines. Um, they only ate healthy food. Uh, a lot of the food they farmed on their own. And you were raised to treat your body in this way. Your dad exercised. Your mom exercised on a regular basis. There was clear communication in the household. 
They spent one day a week in service to others, okay? And they lived a very high-valued life. And now you leave your house, you go to college, you get in a relationship with a guy who comes from a family that was the exact opposite, right? Dad, mom smoke, drink a bunch of alcohol. They're constantly ramped up on caffeine. Uh, they have a terrible relationship with food. They have abusive language. They're never in service to others. And now you're in a relationship with this young man. Every time that you engage in that relationship and he's going to the left, he's making his system more disintegrous, right? He's losing the integrity in the electromagnetics in his body. And remember, every organ in your body has its own electrical magnetic charge. Every cell in your body has its own electrical magnetic charge, right? So when you do things that reduce that charge, you reduce the natural integrity inherent within the body. And now guess what's going to happen? Do you think you're going to make good decisions financially or are you going to make poor decisions? You make poor decisions. Do you think you're going to make good decisions spiritually or poor decisions spiritually? You're going to make poor decisions. Do you think you're going to make good decisions or poor decisions physically? You're going to make poor decisions. Because you're out of integrity, right? And so everything in the universe, everything in our galaxy, everything in our solar system, everything in our planet is geared towards electromagnetic integrity. And so in short, all the systems in true body intelligence are there in place to restore the natural state of electromagnetic integrity so that the person can live a very integrous life, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. See, when I'm in supreme alignment, everything in my life is in alignment. But when I'm fragmented at an electromagnetic level, at a cellular level, at an organ, right, systemic level, at a sense organ level, at a structural level, I then attract to myself things that will cause me to be more disintegrous. And so really, all the systems in true body intelligence are in place to restore the integrity that's naturally inherent within the human body. And so every state of disease, which I call dis-ease, is an expression of disintegrated electromagnetic frequencies. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. It's um, I, I hear a lot of the Taoist, um, Taoist, Taoist principles um, coming through in what you're saying, and um, it makes sense. I'm just wondering if it is possible to ever reach and to constantly be in what you call um, supreme alignment, because a human body or in being incarnated in a human body comes with a challenge. <laughs> of being under the rule of the body no yes everything's under the thing about the body is the body will always tell the truth mm -hmm. right the spirit will always tell the truth the mind will lie a thousand lies because the mind is there to keep you safe right and so um and so the question is is when i discover at some point on my journey and that's for all the listeners here when you discover on your journey that there's a place in your life where you have pain, you have to address it from all sides and you have to go into the body to do so. Yes, is there value in sitting with someone who will counsel you, listen to you, right? Yeah, there's, there, there's value in therapy. None of it is a, re, is a replacement for getting into the body and repairing the corrupted, disintegrated, fragmented energy that's circulating, creating more problems in your system. And the easiest way to do that is to push into any part of your body where you have pain, right? When you're in the human story, you're being, in, you're being inundated every single day 
with more complex stress, right? 30 years ago, there, there was no cell phone. Okay. There wasn't. There was no cell phone. So no one was dealing with those kinds of issues, right? So now, 30 years later, there's uh, electromagnetics, right, the, that come from the phone, okay, from the computers, from the technology that we use that are creating problems. We have air pollution that's greater. We have water pollution that's greater. We have um, food sources that have been corrupted and so we're constantly being challenged and so the beautiful thing is is with bester size or the body of light using transmutations or attunements every day you can reduce your daily accumulated stress load that you're picking up from your environment so that you can maintain supreme alignment but in order to get into supreme alignment you have to reduce your lifetime accumulated stress load by at least 50%. And the reason for that is this. When you reduce your lifetime accumulated stress load by 50%, your perception of reality changes. And so the things that your girlfriend used to say that used to bother you, they no longer bother you. The things that your mother used to do that used to bother you, they no longer bother you. Why? Because when you reduce your lifetime accumulated stress load by at least 50%, you get placed into a position that I call neutrality. And in neutrality, you add nothing, you take nothing away. You simply see things for what they are, right? Mm. So an example of that is your husband comes home from work and he's stressed, right? And he starts raising his voice and you immediately see him you go, oh, He's raising his voice because he's stressed. I get it. Versus he's raising his voice and now you then raise your voice back at him to go, hey, don't talk to me this way. I told you when you come home and you're stressed from work, you need to go do some exercise or something. I don't want to engage with you anymore. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? When you're in a position of neutrality, guess what happens? He comes home. He's in a high stress state because your neutrality he now drops into your neutral state. So now you're lending him the light that's circulating through your system, right? Versus taking on the shadow that he's projecting into the field. Mm. So light reduces shadow, right? So we're talking about some very complex concepts, but though they're very simple. Okay, electromagnetics, electricity, magnetism, light, shadow, okay? So all humans, all animals are under stress every single day, okay? Even plants, they're under stress every, every, every single day because of how much we have corrupted the natural flow of energy on the planet. And so now we're in this very unique time in the world where we've got the internet People like you, people like me, can have these very powerful conversations where we can get this, these high states of education out to people so that they can make informed choices, which allows their life to do what? To improve. All humans are being stressed by the environment around them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so all of your relationships. Um, that you have on the outside are constantly infecting you on the inside. And what I mean by that is this. Whatever's going on in your body, inside your body, physiologically, structurally, energetically, magnetically, and electrically, is going on in your outer world. What does that mean, your outer world? Your relationship with money, your relationship with religion, your relationship with sexuality, your relationship with education, all the things outside of you that are not working in the way that you want them to, there is a direct correlation that's reflective and relative happening inside of your body. So if my heart is weak, okay, and it's stressed, guess what happens? The heart is the organ for right action. Well, what's going to happen when my heart is stressed? 
I'm then going to do what? Instead of taking right action, I'm going to get into a state of avoidance. And I'm going to avoid the things that I should be doing that are going to make me feel even better. Okay? Let's say my liver is stressed, right? And it's the organ for freedom. Well, what am I going to do instead? When my organ's stressed, in my life, I'm going to repress my own feelings instead of addressing and feeling my own feelings. Right? If my small intestine is stressed, instead of being passionate, I'm going to access feelings of depression. Right? So, whatever's going on in my body is translating to what's happening in my life. Whatever's happening in my life that I don't like, all I have to do is go into my body and locate where that pain is, where that discomfort is, where that stress is, where that distortion is, where that tension is, where that trauma is. And reduce that. And when I reduce that, I restore the natural electrical magnetic charge. And when I do that, I come back into a state of integrity. And now, when I'm integrity, I make good choices. I take heartfelt action to my own benefit and the benefit of those around me. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering as I'm hearing you speaking about this because it, be, it is tangible and I think a lot of people who are following me and have been following the Healer Hub understand that there is a body, mind, ether link. I'm wondering how does a session with you look like? Oh, a session looks like five days. Mm -hmm. Right? So when I work with people, people find me who... They've done everything else in the world, right? That's possible, right? They've gone through the whole Western medical channel. They've gone through, maybe they've done some Chinese medicine. Maybe they've, they've worked um, with some version of naturopathy, herbology, um, Reiki, all these other different systems. And maybe they're, slightly happy for the result, but they know inside them that there's another way, there, that, that there's got to be a way to get back to a high state of homeostasis, right? Back into a high state of emotional balance, back into a high state of physiological and structural and energetic balance. And somehow my name, my book, they know someone who knows me and they call me and they say, Hey, listen, I talked to Dr. Blah, 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 blah. And they suggest that I come talk to you. And I sit down, I have a conversation with them. First, they have to read the book. I don't talk to anyone who doesn't read my book. And then, you know, I counsel them, right? I listen. And then I ask a couple questions. And usually by the end of that conversation, they're pretty on board. They reach out to my assistant. She sends them a welcome packet, very large document. They read through it. They have usually have some more questions. We set up another call. We talk, and then they come see me. And the way things begin is a thorough investigation. So I might spend two and a half, three hours investigating why they're really there because people come in typically to address their pain, right? But their pain isn't really telling me anything about why they're really there. Like I need to know why their soul is there rather than that tiny little bit of discomfort that they've been dealing with for 20 years that they want to go away. And so that takes a thorough investigation. So we go through investigation process. And once we investigate thoroughly, we figure out why they're really there. Now the ball starts rolling fast. Everything starts changing quickly. And then we get into pulling their nervous system out of fight or flight. That's the first step, mm -hmm. right? Because if your nervous system's in fight or flight, electrically, one hemisphere of your brain is turned off. And if electrically, one hemisphere of your brain is turned off, it also means that one half of your body is passive. And the other half is overactive. And so I want to reduce that. And then the next, once I turn on their upper brain, 
I then have to turn on, this is their electrical brain, right? Then I have to turn on their magnetic brain, which is controlled through psoas major and psoas minor, right? So now I have to turn on the electrical and then the magnetic brain. And then guess what happens? They start to light up again, right? Energy is now circulating through the two main channels it's supposed to and it starts feeding the other aspects of their body. Right? It starts feeding their 12 primary channels of energy and consciousness and light. And now we can start getting somewhere. And then I have to start getting into the body. And the first thing I'm going to work on are the emotional channels. Why? The emotional channels are all connected to the past, right? They're, they're retroactive. In order to get a person present, right, I have to reduce their conscious connection to the past as it relates to trauma, unresolved stress, and emotional distortion. As soon as we do that, now their emotional body is now in the present day to day as opposed to being in 1973 stuck in the moment where they had that initial trauma, right? So let's say someone comes to me and they were uh, sexually stressed as a, as, as a seven-year-old girl, right? They had an experience sexually that was beyond their capacity to process. Well, what that does is that stunts their emotional growth, right? So they might be 44 years old, chronologically and biologically but emotionally and socially they're still seven mm -hmm. and so once we repair that fragmented discordant energy and we bring the electromagnetics in that part of the body back into integrity what happens is that seven-year-old girl she catches up to that 43 year old woman in a matter of weeks and now instead of attracting abusive, complex, um, distorted relationships, she's now attracting the opposite. Her relationship with food changes, her relationship with sleep changes, her relationship with how she views her body changes. Because now we've reintroduced integrity back into the system. Mm -hmm. It makes so much sense. Um, it does feel that so many of us get stuck at an emotional age and then we go through life as adults, but carrying the behavior that we adopted at that moment as a coping mechanism yeah, to yeah. survive the pain. That uh, Yeah. Well, that think about children, that. right? Children are doing what? They're doing everything they can to avoid punishment, rejection, humiliation, violence, discomfort, pain, and the thought of death. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once a child goes through a traumatic experience, from that moment forward, they're going to adopt a strategy, okay, to avoid all of that. And that's the smartest thing that they can actually do. Why? Because if they don't, what's going to happen? The perpetrator in their field, the abuser in their field, is going to take greater advantage of them. And so the brain is smart. And it says, hey, we got to figure out how to manage this unmanageable adult who obviously was severely traumatized as a child and is now acting out their trauma with children who have no boundaries and no way of protecting themselves consciously. And so then the subconscious and the unconscious, they take over because they need to protect this child. And then they adopt very specific strategies in order to survive those circumstances. The challenge is this, those strategies that they employ successfully become their winning strategy for life. And now this person moves into the outer world and they become extremely successful. And now, how are you going to get them to give up their winning strategy, which was developed because of their trauma? Right? Like that's the, that's the, 
that's the aspect of this that no one's talking about. Mm. Right? How do we do that? And that's a trick. And that's the thing that I'm better at than any other person on the planet. Okay, maybe in this solar system or galaxy, I am supremely the best at that. And so you have to create a pattern interrupt. And then when we create a pattern interrupt again and again and again and again and again and again, guess what happens? A new pattern gets developed and the mind begins to recognize, right? Meaning that the dendrites move out of that aspect of that part of the brain and they move into a different part of the brain and they start creating a new behavior. Right? A behavior that's in alignment with positivity, Light, love, compassion, kindness, generosity, and confidence. As opposed to the exact opposite of all of those, right? Fear, pain, discomfort, dishonesty, excessive management, um, confusion, fear, self-righteousness, and anxiety. So in a person, when you restore the integrity back into the electromagnetics, the person shifts out of anxiety and into excitement. They shift out of fear-based states into confidence. They shift out of self-righteousness into righteous behavior. They shift out of anger, hate, and rage and into love-based strategies. And the opposite is also true. Take a Fresh, new child, brand new baby, put it in a state that's beyond its capacity to process. And guess what's going to happen? They're going to adopt, they're going to shift out of confidence into fear. They're going to shift out of excitement into anxiety. They're going to shift out of righteous behavior. And righteous expressions in the self-righteous, they're going to shift out of love-based strategies and into thriving anger-based strategies. I cannot really pa move past your affirmation of being the best at doing this in the whole galaxy. I found it really interesting. I imagine that you are very confident in what you're doing and you have a track record to <laughs> support you in holding that belief. Yeah, I mean, it helps that I'm an adept, right? And what that means is, is my mastery is in metaphysics. And that was developed over hundreds of millions of years in earth time and so i feel very confident in that mm -hmm. and i come from a very unique special place uh in the universe and i've been doing this kind of work lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime so and i also have access to those skill sets that i developed while i was on those different planes of existence and so i'm very well aware of this journey of my soul because of the work that i've been doing for so mm -hmm. long so i'm very you, confident in that have you always been aware of how you're able to maintain this um knowledge and to kind of come through it from realm to realm or is it something that you developed in your recent years? Yeah, I mean, it's something that got developed over time in terms of the awareness of the depth of my power, mm -hmm. right? And then every week and every month, it becomes even more evident. So it's something that I'm aware of yet continues to grow, meaning I continue to get access to a greater state or a greater amount of the power and energy and light that's in that cachet that God gave me mm -hmm. to use to the benefit of myself and to the benefit of those around me. Yeah. I'm wondering what motivates you to do this kind of work? Uh, what motivates me? You know, I had very good mentors. You know, I went to a privately well-endowed boarding school in Pennsylvania uh, for 10 years. And the guy that started the school was a guy named Milton Stanley Hershey. In my opinion, in terms of businessmen, he's the greatest businessman to ever live. 
because he took all of his resources and he did, and he devoted them in a trust to children who came from very difficult backgrounds and to give them a place where they could grow beyond their own limitations of the environment that they were initially brought into. And that school has been in existence since 1909. And I was there in the 70s and the 80s. And his story has been one of inspiration. Um, but beyond that, you know, the way in which he was living his life was evident because he structured the school around his own set of unique principles. And those principles were reinforced every day for 10 years. And so when you have examples like that from the moment, from the time you're seven years old until you're 17, and it's consistent every single day, the same messages, it allows you to be hardwired into a particular way of functioning. And so his life was all about service, right? He took the resources that he made and he turned those resources into something that could benefit other people's lives. And his story, if you get on the internet and you start researching the story of Milton Snavely Hershey, right? When you sit back and you see some of the things that he was doing and the times that he was doing them, like for instance, in, in the depression, there was a point where they figured out how to create some devices that would save Milton Hershey a lot of money. And he came, uh, he came by one of the project sites one day. He said, what are those contraptions over there? He goes, well, we got those because that's going to allow us to reduce the amount of manpower we have to use. And he said, if you reduce that manpower, will have less men that have jobs. Is that correct? And his foreman said, yes. And he goes, get rid of those machines immediately and hire more men. Get rid of those machines immediately and hire more men, right? Because he understood the value and he was raised under very solid principles. And so when you have that in your environment consistently for 10 years, as your as your brain is forming, as your emotions are forming, as you're forming psychologically, as you're forming energetically, it's that consistent, persistent structure that allows you to get in touch with the power of service because you you see in yourself right the benefit. Okay, and then also I know my classmates and I can see the benefit in them and how they relate to others, and how they communicate with others, and just the brotherhood and the sisterhood that was developed in the school, and how those students have gone out into every industry and have been successful at the highest levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful that you, you had ingrained the idea of service since instilled in you, in the idea of service. Um, at such a young age. Yeah, and, and and you know, after I graduated, it wasn't it wasn't something in my 20s that I was leaning on, right? It wasn't like I woke up like one day I'm going to be of service, right? I wanted to do the Olympics. Um, you know, I had that dream. I had a dream of being seen, right? Mm -hmm. Because I had, you know, I had potholes. Like you got a road, it's nice and smooth, and then there's a pothole. And I had lots of potholes in my road, and they needed to be filled in. And once they got filled in, I could retrospectively look back and understand the value, the values and the principles and the morals that I gained from being in that school, right? Being part of that institution. I also was at the effect of the limitations of that institution as well. And I've done everything that I can in my power to move beyond and overcome, right? Those things that I experienced that were very negative when I was in that school, right? So I've been able over time to take the negatives and turn them into pluses and then magnify the pluses that were handed to me from being in that institution. Christopher has yeah. prepared an energetic practice for us. It is an attunement, and he will tell us more details about what he's offering. Okay, so with this attunement, what we're going to do is we're going to get you in touch with a very um, 
beautiful frequency, a very uh, high state of of magnetics, and it's in relationship to your angel. So every soul on the planet has angels that they connect with more than they do with other ones. And so all you're going to do is sit down, put your fingertips together, okay, and you're going to close your eyes and repeat after me. And we're going to go through this process and say the same thing nine times, okay? And then you're going to do this every day for 30 days and see what the impact is on you physically, emotionally, energetically, psychologically. See what things are shifting. Subtle energy changes are the most powerful because they create exponential change, okay? And so all you have to do is repeat after me. Here we go. I am one with my angels. Your light is my light. Our light is the light of one. I am one with my angels. Your light is my light. Our light is the light of one. I am one with my angels. Your light is my light. Our light is the light of one. I am one with my angels. Your light is my light. Our light is the light of one. I am one with my angels. Your light is my light. Our light is the light of one. I am one with my angels. Your light is my light. Our light is the light of one. I am one with my angels. Your light is my light. Our light is the light of one. I am one with my angels. Your light is my light. Our light is the light of one. I am one with my angels. Your light is my light. Our light is the light of one. And so it is forevermore. Okay, mm. you can slowly open your eyes and come back into the field and relax. You can sit in this frequency if you want for 5, 10, 15 minutes and allow that to bake in to your body, allow that to bake into your org field, allow that to bake into your, um, your energetic channels, allow that to bake into your consciousness. Thank you so much, Christopher. It was a pleasure. Uh, where can we find you online? How can people connect with you? Uh, you can connect with me at truebodyintelligence.com. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the easiest way to get a hold of me. If you're someone and you want to go deeper, it's easy. Look, take a small bet, order the audio version of the book or order the book. My book is called Free for Life, A Navy SEAL's Path to Inner Freedom and Outer Peace. And read the book. In the book, we're going to go into a much, um, we're going to go into more of the finer details of some of the bits of the conversation that you and I have been having, which I think will be highly beneficial. You'll get to understand in depth about the systems that I use in order to help someone move back into a greater state of emotional, physical, spiritual, energetic, and psychological integrity. Right. And you can email me at support at truebodyintelligence.com. My assistant, Christina, will send you a one sheet. And that one sheet will tell you the steps that you need to take in order for us to be able to get on the phone and have a powerful conversation and see how I can serve you powerfully. Mm -hmm. And if you love music, I'm a musician, singer, songwriter. And uh, you can go to my website, TrevorIntelligence.com, and you can order the album called Heart and Soul, right? And then you can have a nice, calming, grounded vibe in the background that's going to make you feel really good every time you listen to the music. It's very powerful. Mm. So you can get access to me in, in, in different ways. Yeah. So I'm very grateful for your work and for your taking on the call of being of service and carrying on the legacy throughout your different <laughs> different experiences and different existences. <laughs> um, everybody, thank you for tuning in and you can find all the links to Christopher's online presence in the footnotes. And yeah, enjoy your evening or time of the day wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much.